Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. My name is Michael McKeever and I'll be your host today as we talk about creating a theatrical experience. Joining me is our usual panel, starting with the always wonderful actress, producer, director, <laughs> Miss Iris Acker. Next to her is local uh, theater critic and an all-around great guy, Mr. Bill Hirschman. <laughs> and the always wonderful award-winning actress, Karen Stevens. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome a very, very special guest today. He is the artistic director of Zoetic Stage in Miami and an award-winning director. Say hello to Mr. Stuart Meltzer. Hello. 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 Hello creating a theatrical experience. How do you do it? When you pick a play and when you start a new project, what do you do and how do you address the, the project to make it something special? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. <laughs> um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I always set myself up with objectives. Um, this is just sort of my personal technique and I'm really opening myself up to you guys today. I, I try to, uh, pick material for Zoetic Stage. We really pride ourselves on picking really uh, alive, fascinating, new um, work. And work that necessarily the, the town of South Florida, or Miami more specifically, uh, sees often. Um, you know, when I read a play, I first have to see if I fall in love with it. And that's really, it's about passion for me. And I, I then approach it by saying, okay, well, can South Florida really connect to this? And if they can, I really look at, okay, well, what's gonna encourage the widest possible audience to come see the, the show? Okay, that's actually, that's mm -hmm. great. Let's, let's go from there. Mm -hmm. um, say you find a play, you find a, a new play or a, a play that's, that's been established, and you say, this is something that I really think is gonna really resonate well. What's the next step? Do you, you look at uh, casting, uh, mm -hmm. designers? What, what happens next? I, when I read it, I read it with people in mind. I say, okay, this is a really great, this would be really great for Karen Stevens, you know, or this is really <laughs> awesome for something for Iris. You know, um, I, I have to hear it with people. Mm -hmm. Now there's a, con now we have a, we have a really wide breadth of actors in this town and wonderful actors. Um, and some, some actors that are a little, you know, little sort of pains in the necks. And so what I want to work with, <laughs> I, what I want to work with is I want to work with a bunch of people who I can laugh with, who I can collaborate with, who, who really go into that rehearsal space um, with their ducks in a row and who really are passionate about the project. And that's really important for me. You know, it takes so much to put up a play. It takes a lot of money. It <laughs> takes a lot of fundraising. It takes a lot of elbow grease. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, and people don't realize that, the general public doesn't realize that. And when we get into that rehearsal space, the last thing that we need is to have headaches, you know? So we want it to be creative and fruitful. Um, well, okay, so, so, so I think about, yeah. Okay, so, so, so you've done that. Now you've got a cast mm -hmm. put together. Talk, talk about the um, getting your designers and, and how, how that works. And do you collaborate with designers? Well, let me, let me put it this way. We've collaborated, we've worked together on sets like that, and, and it's always a blast getting uh, your, your input. I mean, let's talk about mm -hmm. uh, the set for, say, like uh, a show we did a, a while Assassins. back. Assassins. Uh, Assassins is a prime mm -hmm. example. Okay. Let's, let's talk about that. I came with a couple of designs and you kind of said, no, that's not what I want, mm -hmm. and we went mm -hmm. from there. Well, I, my job is simply to convey creatively whatever's going on in my head to the creative team, to the artisans. So my job is to get a collection of visuals, of feelings, an emotional world, sensorials, and bring that to the table in a meeting. And whatever, the, whatever that the designer, Michael, a lighting designer, a sound designer, takes away from that meeting, will say, okay, well, a big part of what we were doing was, okay, we we're doing a kind of a circus or, or a carnival feeling for assassins. So we look at the time period that we want to hit. We look at the vibe. We look at the feeling. We, we talk about it emotionally. Um, the best collaborations that I have are with designers who can, um, who listen to what's going on in the director's head. And that's something that's not verbal. That's just being coming inspired by what the director is offering on the table. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Now, this town doesn't have a plethora of designers. 
you know, we're, 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 we have probably just enough. We can do it some more. <laughs> Um, and I think that it's going to be a growing community with designers. I know that. I, I, I really didn't know that at all. Because mm -hmm. I look at programs all the time, and yes, I do see a new name every now and then. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. very, you know. You mentioned keep saying we. Uh, Good. I, I, <laughs> isn't we? Uh, are you a committee of one? Or, or mm -hmm. I mean, um, mm -hmm. selection of shows. Well, theater. Uh, picking the designers. Right. Theater is never done on the solo. It's never done on the solo. It takes a community. And um, thank you, Hillary Clinton, for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> or it takes a village, I should say. Um, but the, uh, no, well, I do. I pick the plays. I pick the actors. Uh -huh. um, and I pick the designers, ultimately. I pick my creative team. But we, it, it takes a board of directors to fundraise. It takes my wonderful partner in crime, Carrie Schiller, to go ahead and produce. And we produce in a glorious space at the Adrian R Center in downtown Miami, and it takes those that crew at the R Center to go ahead and and um, uh, uh, you know help us sell tickets and clean up and 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 their their technical team. So it's a lot of people to put up a play. But when, tell, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> when you are how far in advance of opening night are you? talking to designers, and how long does that process mm -hmm. last? Well, ideally, it would be six to four months ahead of the project, mm -hmm. ideally. Sometimes, unfortunately, you know, here's an example. For Assassins, we had a lighting designer um, that was, uh, we hired, and the lighting designer quit a week before going to tech. Oh. Now, for those people out there who don't know what tech is, tech is the time when we produce when the play is getting all the um, elements that needs to be finalized, the lighting, the sound. And this particular musical it was a musical, it's Assassins, and we uh, lost our lighting designer. So we had to get a lighting designer in there within days to step up to the plate and light this musical for us. And in my thought, he did a fantastic job. Um, but that's working sort of on the fly. You could mention some past shows. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear that. Well, I'd like to hear yeah. That. But, but, all right, so now. Let me mention the shows. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some past shows that, that, that Zoetic has done in, in this capacity. Well, Fear, Fear Apart. Apart. <laughs> Fear <laughs> with our Carbonell Award winning Karen. performance. <laughs> um, and also for Christy Mus Brown, we've done several <clears throat> Michael McKeever plays. Um, we've done uh, Moscow, Moscow, South, Moscow Beach, Babylon. South Beach Babylon. Clark Gable Slept Here, oh. which is now getting its, going into its third uh, production nationally. You know, with Fear Aparsh uh, that we did with Karen in it, uh, Christy Mus Brown, uh, received a um, the St Mimi and uh, please help me out the Steinberg. the Steinberg, Steinberg, Steinberg the, Harold and Mimi the Harold Steinberg. and Mimi Steinberg uh, citation which is exciting <laughs> because we love doing new work at Zoetic stage. I like it. Mm -hmm. So you 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 your artistic vision has to originate somewhere. Give us a little background mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. on Stuart. Like what what's your your area of expertise and how did you come to directing and. Mm -hmm. Well, my air, thank you for that question. My area of expertise <laughs> is catastrophe. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that, you know, I had a catastrophic childhood, you know, and I was always playing in my head, and I was such an artistic kid. You know, I was a singing prodigy. I sang all throughout, you know, I, I originally went to school for singing, <coughs> and uh, which got me into acting. And then when I went to graduate school, I got my master's in directing. I uh, said, well, you know what, this is where I am going to make a buck, you know, and, I don't know, you know, this is where I'm going to make a buck. <laughs> um, the, uh, but ultimately, it was the best choice for me to get my master's in directing. But to be creative, I often say that if I ever wrote a book about myself, and I don't love talking about myself too often, but if I wrote a book <coughs> about myself, it would be coming from circumstances that were not um, that were not healthy ever, and learning to be creative from that. And so I can only be creative. Um, on downtime, I, you know, when we're not doing anything, I have to write, or mm. I have to cook, or, you know, there's, I'm, you know, creative people are creative all the time. 
and it becomes a matter of a life source. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I love. I love that about theater. But, but yeah. here's a question, and using that creativity, one of the things that I personally love working with you on the projects that we've worked Why, on. thank you. <laughs> is that when we get into rehearsal, especially with new work, say um, Clark Gable Slept Here, which is a show we, we, uh, we world mm -hmm. premiered at Soetic. What I love um, is the collaboration that you that you um, encourage during the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of cutting and a lot of developing that happened with that show in a relatively short period of time. And, and one of the things that I loved was that we we would we would try a bit and it wouldn't work. And you would let the actors, you encourage the actors mm -hmm. to toss in ideas or bits. And as a playwright, I was like, you know what? It works. I'm stealing it. As it, an actor, I want to second that mm -hmm. because oh, that was my nice. experience you, yes. also. Yeah, that That's what made the, the process really, really um, thrilling for me as an actor to be to feel like I had a voice in that process mm -hmm. and then was encouraged to do that. Well, you know, thank you. And <clears throat> you know, you're you're again. It's I, I'm I'm a director. My job is to adhere to the play, to the playwright's attention. So what do I know? You know, what do I know what it's like to be, you know, uh, a, a, a black woman, you know, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the military or, you know, and, and, and this stuff. So you're going to bring your world. I'm going to bring my world. You're going to bring your world. We're all going to bring a professional element to the stage. You know, we all know how to be. We all know what's funny. And that's another thing. I love to find funny in everything because I think even in, even in the, uh, the darkest dramas, there's got to be humor. And th this is important for collaboration because it theater is alive. And once, as soon as one person controls it as a you know as a dictator, um, then it's then you stop growth. You stop things living. But that you know? brings up an interesting question. Yes. There are there is a range of directorial style where you have directors who come mm -hmm. in and they know from the moment they walk in they've got an <laughs> awfully good idea exactly what they want it to look and sound like. They, and then you have directors on the other end of the spectrum who go walk in with almost no preparation. Easy, they easy. discover everything on the, on, the, on the floor. Not How much preparation do you do mm -hmm. before the first day of rehearsal? Do you have a clear vision in your head of exactly where you want it to go and then are uh, uh, responsive to other input or do you come in amorphously, or do you? How much work do you do before you see these people well, on the I, stage? I think I'm sort of 50/50 on that. I think I come in the middle. Um, I my time never gives me, you know. Thank God, you know. For <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my time doesn't. Yes, my time allows me to be very busy. So um, I also teach full time at New World School of the Arts, and. Um, you know, here's an example. This week, I, this, two weeks ago, I opened up the play Rock and Roll while going into rehearsal for another production, wow. while going into rehearsal for two productions, and then so on and so forth down the line. Um, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'm not as prepared as I could be. Um, but uh, I, the one thing that I do treasure is my level of instinct. So there's nothing, I am engaged in every single component mm -hmm. of every moment. And we work moment to moment all the time. And I'm engaged in that all the time. That's the only way I can work. But one of the things <laughs> that, that. that Stuart does that he uh, brings to rehearsal is the, the first or second day of rehearsal when you, when you walk into the rehearsal hall, the walls are covered with, with references oh, from, the, from what mm -hmm. the play is about, whether mm -hmm. it be Contemporary Hollywood or turn of the century um, Americana, the walls oh, are literally marvelous. covered with. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to beginnings. Zoetic. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, every actor say, well, I want to write a part for myself. Was the, as a producer, as a director, I mean, you say, I really want a theater. I mean, every director wants his own theater. You made it work, you made it happen. Um, mm. How? Why? Why you? And why at the arst you must have <laughs> some kind of magic, some kind of relationship that got you where you are today with Zoetic at the arst? Well, Walt Disney said that if you can dream it, you can do it. You know, and I live by those words. If you can dream it, you can do it. And I was blessed to go through boot camp. Um, I came to South Florida a few years ago, um, fresh out of uh, 
of graduate school with a bunch of chutzpah <laughs> saying <laughs> that I am going to be a director and everything that I touch turns to gold and I, my ego was so large. And uh, little did I know that um, I, it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of hard work and I was blessed to go through boot camp at another th a theater company um, and I learned how to deal with people. Mm. I learned how to communicate and I learned how to deal in dire situations and, and dealing with a lot of sort of uh, mishigas around. And uh, when that job ended, I said, okay, what did I learn and what are my goals? My goals are to have a theater company of my own that uh, conveys extraordinarily, or ex that conveys the highest caliber of work. And I wanted a theater company that South Florida could be proud of, that represents South Florida on a national level because of its work. That's my goal. So going back to the beginning, just like what you said, beginnings, I started this conversation off saying I give myself goals. <laughs> Good for you. And I give myself goals daily with a rehearsal, with a production, going back to what you talked about, what makes an event. If I have a goal, I want the audience to be wowed. I want the audience to not be able to stand up at the end. I want, so I go into this with ideas. This is my goal, you know, and let's see what we can do to make that happen. So your goal was to have zoetic theater. My goal was to have the zoetic stage be a, a, an omnipresent force in South Florida. How did you convince Scott? Are we talking about Mr. Schiller? We're talking about Mr. Schiller, sure. Who How, he is? Who is the executive vice president of the Arsht. Well, the theater that I had worked at prior had been working in the first two years of the Arsh Center, so I already had developed a relationship oh. with the Arsh. Um, Carrie Schiller, who is who she and I worked together at this other theater, I brought her on board for a Zoetic Stage, and she happens to be married to Scott Schiller. But <laughs> that's not how we got in, and many people want to believe that. That's not how we got in. We had to go in with a plan. What are, who are we? What do we want to do? And why is Zoetic Stage good for the Arsht? You know, at that time, thinking, you know, why is the Arsht good for Zoetic Stage? Oh, well. <laughs> but, you know, you have to go ahead. Um, but since then, we're going on to the, um, our 12th production there. I am the most produced. I, I directed more there than any other director at the Arsh Center. In that space, and, in the no, in the entire studio. in the entire space. Oh, who knew? <laughs> yes, um, and um, I love it there, and they are an amazing group of people. I I can't. Do you have any competition? Of, of course. Uh huh. But it's healthy, you know. Everything is healthy. You know, competition, competition is healthy. But you know, here's the thing: we we, we live in a society that gives awards. We live in a society that does best of lists. And we live in it, and, and you know, and this is right. so. Sometimes we, sometimes we measure. Sometimes we fall into the trap <laughs> of measuring ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't get nominated or if we don't get into a best of lift, and that becomes very you know, disheartening sometimes. Sure. And then I think the trap of that is just doing things for that recognition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then because you lose sight of why we're originally doing As it. As opposed mm -hmm. to doing it just to do good mm -hmm. work. Right. You know, we lose sight of that. And competition is, 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 is very healthy. I think that I learned from Dave Arisco. I learned from Joe Adler. I learned from J. Barry Lewis, who I think is one of the best directors really? in town. Amen. <laughs> um, I learned from Patrice Bailey at New World School of the Arts daily. I learned from, but I also learned from the other organizations, from Florida Grand Opera you know, from uh, Miami City Ballet. We are a cultural community and we have to support each other and learn from one another. Can it's, we talk about New World School of the Arts? Please, please, yes, please. Well, New World School of the Arts is, um, I am a graduate from there. You know, I've had some really wonderful actors in my class, personally. I, I graduated with Greg Wiener. He and I were in the same class together, along with uh, uh, Andy Kiroga. Uh, and, uh, and Diana Lozano, and, and these are people that work all the time in this community. Um, and uh, I went to college there, um, and I, after I went to college, I got my BFA in acting, uh, went to New York to get my master's, and, and came back and started teaching as an adjunct. And now I teach full-time in the college. It's a wonderful experience. I, I, I can't ask for anything else because the students, there's such 
a level of care that those students put into their work. And it's really exciting. And I think it's very evident the amount of working professionals that that school churns out Stuart, on a this, yearly I was going to say, you guys mm -hmm. are producing some really amazing um, talent. List just a couple of the, the, the Nick Duckharts, the David Hempels. List some of the, the, mm -hmm. the folks that have come out in the last few years. Sure, sure. Well, um, Jessica Sanford nominated for a Carbonell <laughs> last year. Um, we had Lindsay Forge. Uh, Greg Weider, Todd Allen Durkin, um, you know, these are people who are... Our own stars. Yeah, exactly. their own stars in their own right. Um, you know, uh, Ann Chamberlain, Renata Eastlick. Terrell McCraney. Uh, Terrell McCraney. Um, and th this is uh, very important and including, um, you know, so there's, there's, there's so many to go through, but I'm very proud of them and I'm proud to have been there in their, uh, uh, their beginning stages. I'm working with one right now, Betsy Graver, who I'm thrilled that she's um, kind of be such this, such a force as an actress, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> really? Yeah. I, you know, I find it, to back up, I find it fascinating to, to people in the audience who just come to a theater, particularly an established theater like Actors Playhouse or The Maltz or something that's been around for a while, it's easy to forget that Almost every theater down here starts out as a group of actors or directors who want mm -hmm. to make work for themselves that feeds their artistic soul. And there are so many, if, it's just an observation, but at this particular point in time, if you look around, there are a half a dozen small companies that work in, in, in rooms about the size of the studio. Mm -hmm. But they all coming from the same place that Zoetic is coming from. And in fact, where Actors Playhouse began. Mm -hmm. in that, uh, and Steppenwolf, which is now an institution in Chicago, mm -hmm. started with a bunch of people in a church basement. Let's put on a show. And really, yeah. let's, and let's make work for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's do, find the kind of work, we're tired of doing the fourth retread of right. such and such. And it seems to me that Zoetic comes from that sort of tradition. Well, theater people are fearless. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's true, theater people want to work. And if you're in the theater, you just, you figure it out. I mean, because you're not going to get to that point where people are just going to hand you jobs. But you're right. We started out with this, I, with this need to uh, communicate and convey and to entertain and to engage. And maybe it's um, ego, you know, maybe. I don't want to think it's completely ego. I want to think it's, it's the love of working with a script and yeah. material and sinking their teeth into stuff and working with new work and, and really working with actresses like, you know, Karen, um, who, who I've learned so much from and inviting the, our professional community to play with us. Mm -hmm. Zoetic Sage is proud of that fact and also proud of the fact that we are, you know, we love to tell stories of people from all identities and all cultures. Stuart, yeah, I, I was going to okay. ask along those lines, are there any particular type plays that you lean, that you favor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. over others? Well, our audience right now is, we're, we're learning our audience is anywhere, is, is really 55 and under, which is 55 <laughs> to 25. That's, that's our audience mm -hmm. uh, to some degree. And um, uh, so we learn that certain materials are going to be more connecting to the audience and other materials, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, that's what we've learned. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that you gravitate to, towards new work, yeah. which I personally am grateful for. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I knew that was part of the mission. When you first started talking about Zoetic and, and, and mm -hmm. presented Zoetic to the world, um, you said that um, this was something that you wanted to uh, really make part of the mission, was mm -hmm. um, really uh, focusing a lot on new works. Talk about that. Um, the future of theater depends on, on what's being said now and what's being said about tomorrow and hoping and the evolution of the American dream. The American dream in the 1960s is very different from the American dream today. And the perfect American play talks about the evolution of the American dream and where that is. And um, it's important and fundamental and it's for um, the health of the theater that we uh, engage writers uh, and, 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 and get writers to co communicate and talk and discuss about the issues of today and tomorrow. You know, I like to think uh, Apple needs, uh, theater needs to look at Apple, you know, <laughs> like at what's tomorrow's technology, what's tomorrow's voice, you know, and that's important. 
you know. How do you, that brings up something I met, really did want to ask. Again, for civilians, how do you approach a new work as a director and as opposed to Death of a Salesman? When you get a new mm -hmm. script that's just got nothing else on it, what do you do? Uh, you really use your creative, you really listen, you, you talk to the playwright, you talk about what it is, you talk about moments, you talk about what the objective of the playwright is. Um, and um, I, I find myself, I love working on new, new material because I get to really help shape it. And, I, and that's exciting for me. But, oh, excuse me, but, but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a clown, at the same time, um, I also, I fantasize about doing Death of a Salesman. I would love to do Death of a Salesman <laughs> because I think everybody would come to see it. You know, um, but new work is special that way because you're there to help the through line of those characters. Well, one of the things that I've, that I've <laughs> learned in working on the shows that we've worked on together too is really to learn to listen to uh, a fine director and a really fine cast and listen to mm -hmm. what they're saying and what's working and what's not working. As a playwright, you want to hold on to every word because of your babies. I've learned it's much easier to kill my babies now. It really is yeah. because it kill makes the, the play better and it makes um, the the play more commercial and it makes it more palatable to a, a general and bigger audience. Yeah. It's, it's that simple. Yeah. Um, Stuart. We were just about out of time. What do you mean? We're out, out of time. time. <laughs> out of time. We just so fast. I'm really. very upset. I just I want to say thank you so much. This has been a great half hour. I am beyond thrilled to be here with you guys, <laughs> and I love talking like this. <laughs> yeah. Let's stay. Yes. Let's stay. Okay. Yeah. Let's stay. Okay. So we're going to talk for another half hour now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we really do have to go. I want to thank Mr. Stuart Meltzer um, and Zoetic Stage for joining us. Iris, Bill, Karen, it's always such a, a great time spending time with you all. And you as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, go to the theater, see a show. And if you want to find out where those shows are, go to floridatheateronstage.com. We'll see you next week. I'm Mike McKeever, and this is Spotlight on the Arts.